Tonight, the dreams of the Blood Royal come to an end. Welcome to another video. Today we're taking a closer look at the top 10 black mage weapons, at least from my personal perspective. As being present in a realm reborn already, this job features a vast arsenal of choices, with which I hope that my list will feature at least one or two of those that you can then add to your personal list or mix up with one of your favorite glamps. So let's get started. As a clean and basic starting option that you can already receive for a small amount of gil from the market board, there's the Van of the Vortex. It is a no compromise weapon when you're into the green and yellow color scheme, or just like these small angelic wings on top of it, embracing the small orb that forms a clear focal point. The glow however is so clean that it doesn't even reach further than the staff's borders, and it might be one of the coolest shiny Garuda weapons around. The Stardust Rod Zenith also follows on similar aspects, because it proves a very solid introduction to later stages of the Black Mage's Realm Reborn weapon but keeps itself to the rod's boundaries and limits the glowing effect to a bare minimum. However, receiving this weapon is way easier than the later stages, because you can simply get this in around 2 hours. And while I'm actually not a big fan of the form of the stuff, basically the whole Stardust Foundation, this one here is among my favorites. It is clean, has the typical Black Mage color scheme rocking and above that matches well with many glamour sets. So if you're looking for a quick and easy catch that already shines in Relic Weapon vibes, this is a really good starting point. On the other hand, if you want to take this whole design and color scheme to the next level while still maintaining the core of it, take a look at the Seeing Horde Rod that is among my all-time favorite weapon sets that you can also receive from the market board or by crafting it yourself. The foundation is just a simple and clean rod, but above that you have dark lightning effects combined with a reddish dark glow that engulfs this weapon with true evil caster vibes. For a weapon you can already get from the market board or by crafting, this is a phenomenal one and you should definitely check it out or the ones for the other jobs as well. The next one though is a very big step in time effort expenditures, because you need to clear the first stages of Zatnor and the whole Bajja content before it. And some parts of that content can get very unpopulated. The design on the other hand stands out heavily and forms one of my favorite black mage weapons. I guess this could have also been found on a higher spot, but something about the glow is a bit over the top in my opinion. If the fires and dark flames would not stretch further away from the form of the stuff than they unfortunately do, this could easily be my number one. I mean just take a look at the crackling orb and color scheme it rocks, a pure beauty indeed. Still a solid weapon with a bit overboard flames that if you like it that way, there is not much around to be a better fit. Except the rank 6 might be one, if you're really into that witch or dark reaper character appearance. And while I do prefer the mock station's black bosom blood, the deep shadow scythe is a fitting alternative that you can easily get for 600 tombstones of poetics in Yulmor. So if you really need a scythe while still playing the king of DPS, this is the way to go and I really like that square offers that opportunity. Alright, coming to the stars of the show, the Xenoglossies to fire force, which leads us to the ultimate stuff of the heavens that is among the best Dragonsong reprise weapons available. And believe me, if this would not be designed nicely, I would have definitely placed the stuff of the round here that shares its foundation with the ultimate weapon. What doesn't work on many other Dragonsong weapons does indeed work for the Black Mage one. The circle doesn't hide the form entirely, while the blue flames rock that candlestick design very nicely. It is really hard to describe, but I do favor this one over many others and the fiery appearance does match very well with the Black Mage. But yes, Dragonsong's reprise is no joke, so if you want this weapon, prepare for the toughest challenge this game has to offer at the moment. Number 4 is really really subjective. What works on some jobs and definitely doesn't on others, I believe it functions best on the Black Mage. I mean the stuff of the demon really seems to be designed for a Black Mage. The circling orbs finally have a reason to exist and perfectly reflect the symbiosis of your umbral eyes and astral fire faces that exist in harmony of destruction and restoration. Above that the stuff itself is clean and follows on the mixture of these natural elements very nicely, while not being overdone on many aspects. But of course, I do know that it could be a bit too simplistic for some, so check out the price on your server's market board or craft it by yourself and you can see if that weapon is worth rocking. The podium however is a very funny lineup, all being the final stage of relic weapons in a mixed order. So whatever you choose of these, they all require a decent amount of grind and time investment, but offer so unique designs that they are widely considered all time favorites for many black mages. And the number 3 spot is the one I'm not sure I have in common with many black mages, but I absolutely love it. 
featuring the Blade's Fury received from the final stage of the Shadowbringers Relic. What I just said about the Augmented Laws Order Rod is getting more demanding on this weapon, namely completing the whole Shadowbringers Relic content to get this beauty. So definitely check out the comprehensive guide from Morning to know what to expect. But before that, let us take a closer look of why this weapon is worth grinding for. I mean, you need to have some interest in the crescent moon design here, but what always catches my interest and hype are the very symmetrical crystals emanating from the top of the stuff. That combined with the beautiful color combinations and the thorn-like vine that engulfs the rod all along do really stand out and prying eyes are guaranteed here. So if you're up for the task, go for this awesome piece of art and one of the best looking Shadowbringers relics. Okay, the next one actually is among the easier grinds and still this weapon is a perfect example of you love or hate it. And being on this spot, you can firmly guess my stance on this one. The Color Danda Lux or its base version do look like a lollipop. And I can absolutely understand that some people hate it, but for others, it's a visualization of the most vile comet of fiery destruction that in the right hands can claim the throne of devastation, which is something a DPS job should aspire, right? So hop into your poetics min-maxing and be done with the lion's share of the whole Heaven's Ward Relic quest. Because when poetics are managed nicely, you can literally clear the whole step in around 3 hours. Check out the video about that in the description, where I did it all in the mentioned time. Alright, like I said, the last one is a final relic stage as well, so it will be no surprise to many black mage mains out there that we cannot leave out the Lilith Rod Zeta. I cannot even explain what catches my attention on this one, but maybe a combination of very spiky and sharp elements combined with a perfect black mage color scheme and that the usual Zeta energy circles are perfectly placed like a whole sphere of dark energy around the top of that weapon. Above that it's also a lance, rather than a rod, that gives it a very unique style that it could easily be a dragoon weapon in disguise of a stuff. Just one of the coolest eye catchers in a black mage's weapon arsenal, and even if the questline to get there is very time consuming, it is not difficult at all, and if you invest that effort and time, you are guaranteed with a top notch quality black mage stuff. But of course, as the Black Mage has been around from the first hour of Final Fantasy XIV, there are a couple of honorable mentions as well. The ultimate weapons for example. I personally don't like the foundation of some of them, but I guess some might be the all-time favorites for many Black Mage players. But the ultimate Hyvergal Mirror, for example, is just too chaotic. Nonetheless, there are some very impressive market board or crafted weapons that you should definitely take a closer look at, like the Byakus and Spirited Rod, the Augmented Ognos, the face crown rod or Tsukuyomi's moonlit rod, that somehow is a less cool crescent moon version of the augmented laws order rod, but much easier to get. The abyssos rod, which is definitely a solid choice as well, but I feel like it lacks the little extra coolness other abyssos weapons are offering, but you might see it differently. Last but not least, the kinner rod, that is a worse seeing horde one in my opinion. But on the other hand, you won't find this oftentimes on other players' glamour sets. So if you want an alternative that stands out more, this could be one. I hope that you could get some inspiration from my list and I would love to hear your top choices in the comment section. So go out there glam hunters and see you on the next top 10 weapons for the next job very soon. Until then, leave a comment on your favorite black mage weapons and keep loving Final Fantasy.